another episode of the Survivor's Edge. I'm CEO Prepper, and I'd first like to thank all of our subscribers for sticking with me through uh, this little hiatus, and I'd like to welcome all of our new subscribers to the show. Uh, we've made some small changes, and I hope you guys like them. Today we'll be talking about the importance of black Sony guns pre and post SHTF. Now the media will have you believing that when it comes to black gun ownership, only you little gangs, thugs that have no business having guns, or extremely black uh, militant groups are the ones that have guns. You also have brain dead politicians who have absolutely no right to talk about firearms, uh, trying to persuade you that only certain personality types or looks of a person have. Uh, firearms. Now I'll talk about the recreational shooter, the young woman uh, learning to protect herself, um, the young man who is learning to protect himself and his property, or the young kid who is trained to learn how to protect his siblings. They also don't talk about the respectable or responsible uh, black gun clubs but they do want you to concentrate on only white responsible gun owners. They don't want you thinking about the black couple preparing for SHTF. Okay, now we're going to start this off talking about modern gun control's racist beginnings. This is important because you can't have a discussion without this issue. Now, racism is a term that's been tossed around last uh, few years to the point where it holds as much weight as the boy in the story, the boy who cried wolf. Now, gun control in terms of black population can actually be traced all the way back to the British colonization of America, the Black Codes and the Jim Crow era, as well as um, the Reconstruction and Segregation eras. Um, and some states actually made it a, not just a crime, but they made it a, for a way to protect members of the Ku Klux Klan from their victims. And I had, I had talked with um, my parents, my elders, um, even my grandparents before they passed on about um, the days of segregation and what racism was like back then and they all said that it was very different um, for us and that the people crying racism now have absolutely no idea what they're talking about uh, because what they had to deal with was real racism and the fact that um, you know you have white folks trying to tell us about racism um, was actually pretty laughable and that also brings us back to why the term racism uh, or calling people racist has as much weight as the word pride wolf. Now you always have people doing stupid things and you'll have people like Al Sharpton who like to race bait just to get themselves on TV and then you'll have those liberal whites who like to try and tell us how we have been victims of racism like we haven't lived with this since day one and I find that more insulting than actually confronting a racist. Now racism in a post FOR world or post SHTF world I'll compare it to kind of like high school where you have uh, a lot of the ethnic groups, whites with whites, blacks with blacks, Latinos with Latinos, so on and so forth, and you also have um, a lot of mixing of the groups or the uh, races, um, but most likely they'll stick to each other uh, for the simple fact that they're familiar, um, and, and I know it sounds really silly, but you know, Blacks usually like to stick with blacks, and whites usually like to stick with whites because they're familiar. But you also have a huge insurgence of violent um, racial supremacists like the neo Nazis, the Ku Klux Klan, um, 
and so on and so forth and not just from the white side but from every side um, that have racial su uh, supremacists in them and you'll have to search researchers because they don't have the law enforcement or the government to keep them in check um, as we do today so you'll start to see a lot of uh, militias uh, begin to form to protect themselves mainly uh, from you know of course your usual thieves uh, but really uh, they'll form along racial lines to protect themselves from these supremacists So, in a pre-SHTF, you want a firearm just for simple, um, simple self-defense or even home defense from criminal elements. And firearms are good at keeping people at distance. Now, in a post-SHTF situation, um, these criminal elements will go unchecked um, by police forces. Or law enforcement and gangs like MS-13 who have a habit of firebombing um, black homes when they're trying to expand their territory or trying to send a message or intimidate whatever um, and they throw through the those firebombs through the children's windows for maximum psychological effect and again unchecked in a post shtf world these gangs will expand and expand in a very, very violent way. Okay, in America, a firearm is a staple of basic survival needs. The average family has about three days worth of food in their home, and of course, after that three days, they start noticing their chances are a little scarce and just empty at the end of the week. So they tend to go out and see what they can scavenge from what's left in the grocery stores, which only have enough food for an entire area for about three days. So you'll end up out trying to scavenge food out of pretty much anywhere, trash cans, what have you. And because these foods have been exposed to the elements, um, they'll go bad a lot faster, they'll be susceptible to a lot of bacteria, so you end up having to go out and forage. And the thing with foraging for food in the wild is knowing what is um, good to eat and what is poisonous. And there's plenty of uh, literature and videos out there for this, and I highly recommend that you guys go watch those. But in a post-SHTF situation where this will actually come in handy, um, knowing how to hunt um, with both uh, a bow, crossbow, or a firearm uh, will be paramount, not just knowing how to hunt, but knowing where to shoot the animal for a more humane and clean kill. And you also need to learn how to skin and clean the animal, which will be another lesson covered in a uh, video further down the line. Now, if you know anything about self-defense, or if you are a student of uh, martial arts or even MMA, um, nine times out of ten you're going to have a firearm just for basic um, home and self-defense. Uh, women, this is especially important to you. We'll make sure that my wife um, has a gun on hand at all times. But in a post-SHTF situation where you have to venture out into an abandoned uh, city or abandoned town, or any kind of abandoned structure, um, having a firearm, uh, whether you're searching a building by yourself or in a group, will allow you to take care of threats from a distance. Okay, we're going to discuss a little firearm history, uh, the Second Amendment, and 
uh, the NRA and liberal lies. Now, there's plenty of misleading information out there. Let's just not play with that one. There is plenty of it out there. Such as, the Founding Fathers only wrote the Second Amendment for hunting, and that's absolutely far from the truth. In fact, they were one gun enthusiasts, and they wrote the Second Amendment as a fail-safe just in case our federal government itself ever became too tyrannical. The people had a way to take their government back. Now, some people say, oh, they only meant uh, muskets, one, you know, one-shot muskets, which take several seconds to reload. And as you see from these weapons um, from that era, uh, that's far from the truth. In fact, um, these particular weapons were more like the AR-15s of the day. Um, and muskets, one has to remember, was also the military weapon of the day. Both sides had them. Um, and you, of course, had multi-shot guns. So, for anybody to say that they only meant that it is just basically full of themselves and they haven't done their own homework. Um, now, let's go ahead and get into what the Second Amendment actually says. Well, first, let's see what, you know, they're trying to teach our kids in school. That the people have the right to keep and bear arms in the state militia. That's not true at all. In fact, the Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of the free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The Second Amendment is the only amendment that has shall not be infringed in it. And what they meant by a well-regulated militia, they did not mean a state government militia. They meant basically you and neighbors and everybody on the street, everybody has a gun, boom, you guys are the militia. And back then, that is how it was. Uh, so it's the same as today. Now, politicians like Dianne Feinstein and uh, this Kevin DeLeon from California, California, uh, they will sit there and lie to you. Michael Bloomberg is also, um, you know, throwing out tons of money to try and disarm you. Plus, you have the Young Turks that will spew lies all day long. And trust me, turning your guns, thinking the government will protect you, that's never far from the truth. In fact, history has proven to us the experts agree gun control works. And every dictator of the 20th century did exactly that. They had gun control. Uh, here's a story from The Root uh, that's a big line itself. The NRA is not at war with kids. I don't know where they got that. That's a totally false allegation. Um... In fact, most uh, NRA members, you know, have children and go and teach children how to use uh, firearms. Uh, to call the NRA a terrorist group is not just wrong, it's completely um, inaccurate. And so this article itself is fake news, uh, just from that in itself. Now, I saw this uh, meme one day, and I actually had to do some research on it. And... It's true. I, I couldn't believe it. The NAACP um, has been using and propagandizing uh, to disarm blacks. And I, you know, I was a big proponent for the NAACP for many years, and to see this, uh, I couldn't believe it. So the NRA. Now, the NRA originally was not founded to uh, teach pe teach blacks how to use guns, but there were black NRA clubs um, from soon after the organization's inception. Um, so split that and separate that in itself. So yes, blacks, you will see blacks at the NRA convention in Indianapolis later on this year. I will be one of them. So yes, contrary to public belief, the NRA is a civil rights organization. Well, thank you folks for watching. Until the end, hopefully you guys learned a little bit. And hope you get out there and research and learn more about firearms, possibly purchase on yourself. And now you have the survivor's edge.